Hey, what's going on out there, YouTube? SEL2220. I'm back for our brand new open discussion. This week, this is actually Sunday at probably around like, what, 10 o'clock? So, E3 officially starts tomorrow. So, there's a lot of things going down tomorrow as far as I think the Microsoft Expo, I think, is first. And I think the PlayStation Expo is next. And then I think Nintendo has theirs the next day. Um, but it's about to be kicking off, man. And I really wanted to talk about a couple different things. And so I'm probably going to have like a video a day. I really would like to go and do like kind of like a live stream to see what y'all perspective on what's going on and be able to have like a, a instant feed going on. But I didn't have any time to prepare. Maybe next year. <laughs> but right now, right now, my uh, friend Joe, he's back there getting it in as far as with The Last of Us. Of course y'all know Last of Us remastered versions coming out for PS4 along with all these other kind of games such as Destiny such as Halo Guardians or Halo 5 Guardians. You maybe have been rumored the brand new Halo uh, remastered version which is talking about Halo 1, 2, 3, 4 all for the Xbox One. I'm not really sure if that's true or factual or not but the thing that I really want to talk about today is about Microsoft side, what can they do as an industry to boost the sales for the Xbox One? Because so far, they've let a lot of people down, you know, and I know that they've done a lot of restructuring is around the corporation standpoint of new leadership and new partnership of listening vocally to what the fans are really wanting. And I mean, now they've had given you the option of being able to get like an Xbox One without a connect for $399. That's going to be released out tomorrow. Um, I actually went and pre-ordered mine actually at the Microsoft store. I know that GameStop had like a promotion to be able to, I think, trade in and you get 50% back of whatever the system that you had or whatever accessories that you had, which was cool, but I like the way that Microsoft had did it because you actually can give out your games. You get $10 uh, gift cards back for it, no matter what the game is. And so I was like, wow, this is awesome. Anyway, <clears throat> I'm not gonna be giving any of my Xbox 360 games back though. This is why. The reason why I, I'm hoping that Microsoft goes in is because if, and just picture this, I've, I've pushed it before, but I think honestly, if Microsoft goes and adds in backwards compatibility to their franchises, Xbox One platform, I think that will be it. Now, don't get me wrong, I know that PlayStation has already come out with the PlayStation Now, and they are allowing you to be able to do Xbox One, Xbox Two, Xbox Three games, and I think Vita, all through a rent kind of franchise with like kind of like catering to like kind of Netflix in a sense. But the way that they can handle this, it's, it could be amazing. You know what I'm saying? And so, to me, I think that this is the last card they have. But say hypothetically speaking, and I'm gonna go a little bit more detail with this with Joe whenever he gets done playing his game. Um, but Picture this, so say hypothetically speaking, they get to um, the E3, they talk and announce the different games, they trigger it straight to, okay, this is the games that are coming out. Imagine if they say this, okay, we know that y'all really want to actually have the Blu-ray and y'all want to be able to have the Blu-ray 3D, so we're going to give you a firmware update, push it for you right away. I just realized, I'm going to have to pause this because there's a lot of stuff going in the background. <laughs> so give me one second, maybe Joe will join me. He's back. <laughs> but now, Joe, what I was talking about is that we had a discussion earlier that what if Microsoft came out the gate and they said, look, we know y'all are waiting and waiting for these games. We know you've been hearing all these different kind of issues about the frame weight and that we lowering the resolution to like 900 or 720p, whatnot. Well, now, you have the ability, we've been able to boost it up to what we want you to have it at. Not only that, we got you, of course you had a Blu-ray player, but now you'll be able to have the option of doing 3D Blu-ray. Now, in addition to that, we also want to allow you to be able to do the expanded storage, like we gave you the firmware update last week, but now you can actually be able to put your own movies or your own music and be able to add that to your Xbox One and be able to interface back and forth between the Windows 8 and your Xbox One. And on top of all that, now you will be able to have any of your Xbox 360 games and be able to play it on your Xbox One. 
So if you have an Xbox 360 and you still love playing it, then please play it. But we want to be able to cater to you so you can be able to play your Xbox 360 games on your brand new console so you don't have to go back and forth between the two. That would be amazing. Yeah. Do you think they're honestly going to do that then? Um, now that was a lot. But the main thing was yeah, the last thing I wanted. Not, um, that's a lot. That's a lot. That's a lot. Um, honestly, I don't know. I don't know if they're going to do it. I think they're going to do it eventually. Mm -hmm. But I don't think it's going to be anytime soon. Mm -hmm. Maybe I'll say I feel like they're going to make a lot of changes maybe before Christmas. Mm -hmm. um, but but mm, I don't see it make them. I don't see them making that drastic of a change um, by the end of the summer. Honestly, hmm. I don't think so either. I think that, but at the same time, I really feel like they don't have many options. Yeah, they have to compete with Sony, and they have to up their sales. Yeah. The conundrum that we, me and Joe were talking about is that if, if they do, say hypothetically speaking, they just do one of those things, right? Say if they do, uh, okay, now you can be able to play your 3D Blu-rays on your PlayStation 1. That's a plus, right? Mm -hmm. They're not losing anything, and they have a leg up on Sony technically, right? Mm -hmm. Because Sony, even though they're the pioneers of 3D and 4K, they still haven't implemented that on their PS4, which doesn't make sense, you know? Right. Um, but that's a leg up for Microsoft. If they go with the backwards compatibility, like, do they really gain anything, you know? Because if they go and they go about going and putting the backwards compatibility, what Sony has been doing, which you can see with The Last of Us, they got a remastered version of The Last of Us, and we've been hearing the rumors of like Halo 2 being remastered. Now it's one thing if they're going to remaster it for the Xbox 360, but the talk and the rumor is that they're going to remaster it for the Xbox One. So if they give us the ability of going and say you can play Xbox and Xbox 360 games on the Xbox One, like are you, are they honestly going to gain so much from that? To the consumer, in our perspective, yeah, they really would because that would have a draw of getting this system and trading the old system in, you know? But, like, is it really a benefit for them in the long term on a corporate level? Because if they only have one console on the market and nobody buys 360s anymore because they want to buy Xbox One, then they get the benefit on the Xbox One side. Their sales are going to probably beat the PlayStation, but it's like... Is it really going to help their Xbox 360 sales? And that, to me, that's the big thing. I, I still have my PlayStation 3 because I find benefit from my PlayStation 3. It's a big jump, you know. But with Xbox 360 to the Xbox One, it's an even bigger jump because now I got Blu-ray, I've got all these different things that are an advantage. Mm -hmm. I really don't see the use of Xbox 360 anymore. That's, I guess that's the issue. But what do you think? I mean, on a corporate level, do you think they have more to gain or to lose? Um, I feel like they have more to gain, more to gain because um, just based off um, history of platforms, you know, they're being due um, upgraded system, mm -hmm. and it would phase out gradually. It would phase out the 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 one that came out before it. Mm -hmm. You know, we look at seeing that Xbox, um, Xbox Lean. The Xbox 360 came out, you know. Yeah, that's true. It's like, for one, companies stopped making Xbox games, you know. Yeah, the developers do uh, stuff. So, when you have that next gen step up there, everybody's going to transition that level. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Um, so, you feel like, honestly, that nobody's really made a transition, they just bought the system? Um. Cause I know when I had my Xbox, when I got my Xbox 360, I didn't buy any more Xbox games. Like that was it. Exactly. Like that was my newness. And matter of fact, when the Xbox first came out and then they came out with Xbox 360, they said, look, y'all be able to play your Xbox games on the 360. And we'll up the list over the years. Mm -hmm. And we, I was like, wow, this is awesome. So I could take my Xbox games and play it on it? I was like, yeah. 
Then they stopped it. Mm -hmm. They cut it. And you know why they did that? You remember? No, I don't remember that. So, you remember when the PlayStation 3 came out? And it was like 600 bones. Yeah. Remember that? Now, everybody remembers that the original PlayStation 3, which was huge and bulky, you could play Xbox One games and Xbox Two games on it. You remember that? On um, what system? On the PS3. PS3. You could play yeah, you could play PlayStation One games and PlayStation Two games on yeah, the PS3. Yeah, I remember that. Now, at a certain point, they came out with the new console, and it was like that's it. You can't do the backwards compatibility anymore. Right. And so when they did that, Microsoft was like, okay, if they're not doing that, we don't have anything to compete against, then we'll not do it anymore. Mm -hmm. And so they stopped updating their list for the Xbox 360 as far as any Xbox, regular Xbox games. Mm -hmm. And so then now, years later, what, 10 years later, you got this Xbox One system, and I mean, there's no draw to get it, in my opinion. As a gamer, I would love to play something like Titanfall, but... Even more better for me, I would love to play like my Grand Theft Auto on this system. I love to play my place at my uh, Halo 4 on this system, but I can't do that. I got all these games and I'm have to rebind them, which don't make no sense. I don't care if there's a forgiveness program for fifteen dollars, I can repurchase the game. That's uh, that I don't know. Cause you, you what did you say about you like you wouldn't do it? I think you said no. I would, I, me personally, I would not. If I purchased a game that that was remastered for the next gen consoles, well, if I purchase a game, let's say for instance, I purchase a game for a 360, right? Uh huh. And I purchase uh, Xbox One. Mm hmm. If they remastered the game that I previously bought for the older system, mm -hmm. I would not rebuy it. You would. Um, not even for fifteen dollars. Mm hmm. Because for me, I'm paint especially if I know the ins and out of the game mm -hmm. um, I would not unless it's a classic title it, it really has to impress me mm -hmm. like but even then that's tough because I would say if, if they do backwards compatibility my whole thing is well, I'll get into that later but anyway I would say Honestly, I don't know if I would do it. I don't. I don't think I would. I don't think I would do it because you have developers um, working on different projects now that are would be even better than the remastered. Mm -hmm. um, so it's like I'm backtracking. I'm paying more money to backtrack. You know. Mm -hmm. And it's like, yeah, the game will look better visually, but it's ultimately the same game. Exactly. Um, and then you think about, you know, online play, you know, people, I'm a big online gay guy. Um, so it's like, would the online market for this game still be, um, as popular, mm -hmm. um, even with this remastered version, you know, it's just, I don't know. So I wouldn't, yeah. it's a big, it's a big gamble with me. So I wouldn't do it. I think, and similarly, um, I had a similar experience with, uh, Battlefield 3 mm -hmm. um, when they came out with the premium package. I pre-ordered Battlefield 3 when it first came out and it was just the regular package. Yeah. They came out later with a Battlefield premium. Mm -hmm. You know, it costs oh. a little extra money. Um, and you get all the updated, uh, you get all the updates when they come out. Like all the new map packs. Expansions. And the expansion, pa expansion, expansion packs, you know. Mm -hmm. Just easy access and you just get it mm -hmm. right and I was like if I'd have known this when the game first came out they'd come out with a premium package I wouldn't have bought the game you know gotcha. what I'm saying and I think you know it's 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 it's, it's unfair um, you know for to pay out you know 60 bucks for a game that just comes out yeah. in pre-order you, you buy it pre-order night and then you have to turn around and put more money into it mm -hmm. Um, for for the same game for the same experience, you know, mm -hmm. it's to me it doesn't doesn't sit right with me. Mm -hmm. so, so I, I guess I have to play the devil's advocate then because it seems like we're going on the same track <laughs> of like go for the backwards compatibility, don't remaster everything, mm -hmm. wasting our money and taking more time with the developers unless 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 absolutely have to. So take all right, this this is what I'll do. Take Grand Theft Auto 5, 
Okay? Mm. Now, they said that they're going to redo this game for PC, Xbox One, and, you know, um, the uh, PS4, right? They've said that, but they haven't officially announced it or anything like that. I can see for PC, right? Because it, it's always going to be games that are multi platform. Like, Destiny's multi platform. I can understand that. But when the game has already been out for a while and then you just remake it, to me, that's a whole different thing. But take Grand Theft Auto, right? Say they add backwards compatibility. And you start playing it, you're like, man, dang, he's the same game. Why am I, like, what's, like, why can't I have something a little bit more sharper? You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And you're going to want to play that game on that high definition. You're going to want to see what the physics engine is differently. But alternatively, say if they do like, add that backwards compatibility and you play your your normal Grand Theft Auto 5 on your Xbox One, but then the online is upgraded. They add a big old pack so that now the online, it looks completely different for the Xbox 360 and the Xbox One. That's thinking outside the box because Basically, you keep the same dynamics of the game and that core software that's on that disc. But these systems, the games can be up to 34 gigs. Mm -hmm. So that means they can take the online, make it 50 gigs, revamp it from the ground up to be able to be fully freshed out as far as graphics, as far as physics, and then new stuff just for the Xbox One. Mm -hmm. Alternatively, they, they can just take that. So say any multiplayer that they want to go back and remake, then I say, then go for that. Remaster the multiplayer. If the person has to, I would pay for that. I'd, I'd pay for the multiplayer to be revamped for the catering system that's the next gen. But I'm not gonna repay for the single player. But it's like, they say, oh, it's a single package kind of thing, you get what you come for, but it's really about a profit to me. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I could see like Grand Theft Auto, I would love to see that on next gen. But at the same time, like if I took that same game and added it on my system and play, I'd play it just because it's a beautiful game. We, we're playing Last of Us right now, right? This game looks beautiful, and this is just the X uh, PS3. So to have that on PS4, what are we really having to gain mm -hmm. versus just taking that same as that game and being able to replay it again? Because now the PlayStation now that same as that game, you can play it. So why would you go back in about two months? Buy the remastered version where you can play it on PlayStation now. Like, why? Because somebody told you that the graphics look amazing. It's not like they're adding any more to the game. If they're adding more to these games as far as content, then yeah, mm -hmm. it's fine. But they're not, you know? So, to me, Microsoft, if you hear us, if you hear us, PlayStation's already made their move. You can go so many different routes. We gave you examples of uh, the storage, being able to add... Uh, DivX based movies or even music. We talked about adding 3D to the controls as far as looking at your Blu-rays. And I mean, the backwards compatibility, if y'all went that route, y'all could destroy the market. I promise you. Because if you do that, all your older fans, Everybody that I've talked to, I've gone to the Microsoft store, I've gone to Best Buy, I've talked to co-workers, I've talked to people that used to be heavy into Halo and all the different other games. We would back you. <laughs> we would take our games. I don't even know if I would trade any more games in to GameStop. Now, this might be the problem. That might be the real issue. Because would you trade in your games if you knew you could play them on the Xbox One? No. <laughs> so that means that Microsoft is not going to be able to get that restock and I mean Microsoft store not Microsoft the company but then also GameStop wouldn't be able to get that restock either and it's, it's a part kind of deal mm. so if they recycle those discs that might be it but <laughs> set aside all that if if y'all went down this route I probably would trade in another game I would continue to buy 360 games if they just came on the 360 and I'd play them on my Xbox one. Mm -hmm. I would honestly There's certain games that I want to play for the 360 still But I haven't because I've been waiting to get a next-gen console But I can't even play those games anymore because now I don't even have an Xbox 360. Right. I've traded it in You know, right. so I feel like y'all should really think about this come tomorrow come 9 o'clock tomorrow I don't know if you see this video if it's uploaded on time, but please Microsoft, mm -hmm. consider 
the alternatives that you have. Me and this guy, we're gonna be reporting uh, probably for the rest of the week, different videos, talking about different things from E3. If we see a game, like the most anticipated game, we maybe we'll go through like maybe 10 of those that we're really anticipating. If we get time tonight to go through them, if not tomorrow. Um, maybe we'll talk about um, the PS4. Like what can they do to really sharpen the image? Cause I mean, honestly, it's a good system. I've played it, you know, but to me, it lost its appeal because it's nothing like the PlayStation 3. The PlayStation 3, is the entertainment system. 